It's been three years since I was last here at the Mojave Road, and last time we got some terrible weather, and I wasn't able to donate my rock to the Traveler's Monument. But we're gonna change that this time. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and I am so excited to finally be back here on the Mojave Road. This has been something I have been planning for a long time, and I finally got my good buddies together, and we are gonna spend the next three days going across this amazing trail, seeing all the historical monuments along the way, and just doing some good camping, eating some good food, and having a great time. Now, it is January, so it's a little chilly here, and there was some rain in the forecast, but hopefully the weather holds, because last time when I was here on this trail three years ago, we weren't able to go all the way across Soda Lake because there was some rain, and it just made it impassable, and so I wasn't able to donate my rock to the Traveler's Monument and see what the plaque said and nobody would tell me what it said so this time the goal is to get this rock all the way to the monument and find out what the plaque says this should be an awesome time guys I hope you'll enjoy this journey we kicked off this adventure by meeting up at the Balancing Rock campsite, which is just a few miles in on the east side of Highway 95. We chose this campsite because it was easy to access from the highway and a great location for us to get an early start the next morning. This was a great campsite that had plenty of room for multiple vehicles, offered a little protection from the wind, and was surrounded by some amazing desert views in every direction. We had a few new folks with us on this trip, so it was nice to have a little bit of time to get acquainted. And of course, my good friend Marco had his Overland Camp Chef hat on. Marco, it's great to be out camping again. And now I know you insisted on cooking dinner tonight, yes. so what do you got planned? I love it, it's been a great day. It's cold today, but it doesn't matter. We're making fish tacos. Fish tacos. Beer batter fish tacos. Okay, so what do we got? Got two pounds of tilapia. I got my vegetables for the coleslaw because that's if, if that doesn't have flavor, the tacos are not good. Okay. And I got some flour and I got some baking powder and some uh, spices to okay. make the uh, batter. Nice. And we're going to cook this up on the scottle? On the scottle. Oh, dude, my mouth's already watering. I can't wait. I was really surprised at just how easy it was for Marco to prepare the coleslaw and the fish batter at camp. Just simple ingredients that just about anyone could throw together, something I may personally try in the future. Nothing fancy here, but when you are camping, having a great meal just warms the soul and brightens everyone's mood. These tacos were delicious. The first night was very chilly, but we knew we would be seeing some low 30 degree temperatures during this trip. So everyone brought plenty of warm clothes, some warm sleeping gear, and everyone was tasked with bringing a bundle of firewood because what is a camping trip without good friends sitting around a campfire? Well, it is a beautiful morning and a great start to a day. It is 37 degrees, so it's a little chilly out here, but we kind of knew that coming in, so we all brought appropriate clothes. But we woke up to the most amazing red sky sunrise. Just beautiful out here this morning. Now, we are just packing up the rest of our gear, airing down our tires, and then we're gonna hit the trail. We've got a lot of miles to put in today. We've got a lot of cool things to see, but there is some rain in the forecast, so our goal is to try to get to camp before the rain hits. Hopefully we can do that. After a few good hot cups of coffee and some very tasty breakfast, it was time to roll out. This was going to be an unforgettable few days on the trail with some crazy weather, a few mechanical challenges, and some new stories that everyone in the group will be telling for a long time to come. Let me introduce you to the convoy. All right guys, we just crossed over the 95 highway and we're getting ready to hit the heart of the Mojave Trail. I just want to give you a quick introduction to all the Jeeps and the folks that are with us. So here's my Jeep and I brought my oldest son, Devin, with me today. He's going to be doing a lot of the driving. Here we've got Josh and his son, Chris, in their really nice JLU Overland Jeep. He's done a great job with that build. Then over here, we've got Kate the Jeep. You guys may have seen the walk around we did with this. Ali is just awesome guy, and if you haven't checked out that video, I'll leave a link down below, go check it out. And of course, we've got my good buddy Marco who was cooking up some great chow last night. It's always good to be out on the trail with him. Then we've got Eric and Jen who are here with us, and always good to wheel with them. Got a great build. 
And then last but last least, pulling up the rear, we've got Rob in his awesome Jeep built truck. Also have a walk around of that. So we're getting ready to hit the trail, guys. You can see it heads way over those mountains. Many miles to go. We got a lot of good people here. This is gonna be a great day. And of course, we all had our rocks that would be making this journey with us to be donated at Traveler's Monument. The Mojave Road is one of the most iconic overland routes in the U.S. and will take you over 130 miles across several different desert terrains. The trail is hard on vehicles, so ensuring your rig is in perfect working order is really essential as there is no support along the trail. Having plenty of fuel, food and water, some basic hand tools, and your navigation route and camping stops planned out will help ensure a successful trip. The Mojave Road is full of spectacular geological structures, a few quirky man-made attractions, and some interesting historical landmarks that you'll get to experience along the way. Our first stop was Fort Paiute, which is located about nine miles in from Highway 95. This fort was built for the U.S. Infantry to use back in the late 1800s to help protect the mail riders along the Mojave Road. My son and I always enjoyed checking out old relics like this. There are only a few remains left now, but to imagine what the conditions were like for those soldiers that lived here back then is pretty amazing. So this was worth a brief stop, but we couldn't stay long because we've got a lot of miles to put in. the things I really enjoy about the Mojave Road is sometimes you're cruising down some straight dirt road and other times you're winding your way through some rutted out sections. It really keeps things interesting. As we made our way deeper into the Mojave Forest, the Joshua trees started popping up everywhere. This is one of my favorite parts of the trail. Surrounded by the unique twisted and bristled Joshua trees is something you don't get to experience anywhere else. The Joshua tree only grows here in the Mojave Desert. You won't find them anywhere else in the world. They can reach 40 feet tall and each one is so different from the other. You might start to question if you are in the center of a Dr. Seuss book. One of the first quirky encounters you will come across on the trail is the famous penny can tree. Now I'm not sure what the origin of this is, but our group figured with all the abuse our Jeeps were taking and mother nature peering down on us, that any luck we could muster up would be good. So we all left a penny, or in Marco's case, a peso. <laughs>
were making a pretty good time on this leg of the trip and I had planned two different campsite options for today just in case there were any unforeseen events that slowed us down. So I called a quick driver's meeting to get the team's input. So we, the decision is, do we want to go off trail eight miles, go check out that campsite, stay there. It's going to be a little higher altitude, which could mean a little colder temperatures, which is something to consider. Or we stay on the trail, get to this one a little early, set up camp, enjoy it. You know, it's past lunchtime, so we can enjoy lunch there. So does anybody have a preference or non-preference? Unless this one is crowded. Being on trail, it might be, but arriving at this time of day and claiming the campsite, probably be, both would be open. Because that group ahead of us said they were going to the Rock House. I say we go check out the, the, the camp so. up there. Yeah? Yeah. Because yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm on, you only lose three degrees per thousand feet of elevation gain, yeah. and I don't think Whoa. it's going to be this more. This is coming from the flip flop guy, but I'm game. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, 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 that's on average. All right, we're taking a right. Let's do it. Right. Guys. Yeah, let's get it. That decision right there was absolutely the best call we could have made and would ultimately end up having the greatest impact on the entire trip, as you will see here shortly. But first, we stop by the old abandoned settler's house for lunch. And this old house, while run down, has sure stood the test of time. And it really just happened to be in the perfect spot Lunch was not as elaborate as last night's dinner, but for on-the-trail food, this fit the bill perfectly. Now, time to go head eight miles north and go check out this campsite. So I gotta tell you all, the drive off Mojave Road up here for eight miles was absolutely worth it. This little campsite right here is a nice little hidden gem and I'll leave the GPS coordinates down below. We've got mountains all around us and we've got some beautiful trees. We've got some great protection. Now here's the thing, as we were coming up, we were starting to get a little bit of sprinkles. We knew it was gonna rain today, but there was actually some snow flurries and there's some snow on the ground here. So. I've got a feeling that things are gonna get a little chilly tonight, but we're gonna set up camp and uh, get some chow going. It's gonna be a great night, guys. All right, everybody is just about set up at camp. I'm gonna give you guys just a quick walk around, just take a look at everybody's gear. I think it's always kind of a fun thing to do. So here we've got Rob's setup, and Rob keeps it simple, man, I love it. He's just got the small CVT tent, he's got his full truck, everything's good to go, nice and easy. And then over here, Marco's got a nice little spot. And you guys have seen Marco's Jeep on the channel many, many, many times. And he's always got, you know, some kind of new piece of gear. He's got some new utensils in here and some, he was showing me these little bamboo utensils. He loves these little things. Pretty cool. But again, if you are new to the channel, you've never seen the walk around of that Jeep. You definitely want to go check that out. And then over here is Ali and he's got his full setup going on which is really cool because he's really using some of this stuff for the first time. I yep, mean, look, look at his, look at his <laughs> camp chef. It's almost brand new, but he's gonna put that to work tonight. He's making some kebabs for everybody. He's uh, He's got dinner duty, which uh, everybody's really, really excited for, but he's just got a great setup. That tent is just massive. I mean, you could put four people up there. Four easy, yeah. Very, very easy. Marco's over here setting up the flat pit. We're gonna do a little bit of grilling over there. Uh, we got a big old fire pit here for where we're going to put the camp. Uh, Josh has got everything set up. He's got his tent up there. His tent is this eye camper tent. I got to tell you guys, that is a really nice tent. It's a very nice setup. And then he's got the full bat wing. He's got some chairs. Uh, you can see back there, they sent up a little uh, private toilet thing over there. Pretty nice. It's a nice little di idea. Um, good setup. Beautiful Jeep. Uh, you guys have seen my Jeep a million times, but I do have a couple new things I'll show you. Right here I've got some non-stick 
GSI pots and pans. I had been using that um, Stanley stuff for a long time, but I found that I use less water when I use nonstick. And then I just got this new utensil pack. It's also from GSI. Good, good little kit, man. I like it. I'm pretty happy with it. But uh, that's what we got going on. There's our rocks. You know, we got to get our rocks to uh, Traveler's Monument. That's the plan. And then last but not least is Eric and Jen. They've got a great setup. And he's got the Alucab 270 awning. Beautiful awning. Love it. Great little setup here. Jen treated us with a nice little snack platter when we got to camp. There was no shortage of food on this trip. Okay, so we were worried about rain, but now instead, we've got snow. I guess that's better than rain. And it wasn't long until the occasional snow flurry became a full-on snowfall. This was totally unexpected. Thankfully, we had plenty of firewood because we were going to need it tonight. Ali smells good, man. You ever cooked in the snow like this before? No, this is a first. Awesome. Well, it smells great, man. I think dinner's going to be awesome. Thanks, brother. Ali was grilling up some Persian chicken kebabs, and man, they were so savory. There's nothing like warm food to warm your spirits on a cold, snowy night like this. The snow really started coming down harder and harder, and it wasn't long before the ground was covered, along with all of our tents and awnings. The weight of a few inches of snow on my rooftop tent was starting to give me a little concern. So every couple hours, I got up there and blasted it off. Thankfully, the tent and fabric on everyone's tent held up perfectly over the night. Something tells me I'm going to have to do that again. <laughs> Nothing like a little snow to bring out the kid in all of us. There may or may not have been a snowball or two thrown at camp this evening. And this big old fire kept us nice and toasty for several hours into the night. Well, good morning. As you can tell behind me, uh, things got a little interesting last night. We got more than just a couple snowflakes. There is probably two to three inches of snow on the ground. Let me give you a quick walk around and just show you what camp looks like. It's beautiful out here, totally unexpected. So here's the trail that we came up on. You can see it's just covered with snow and there's just snow everywhere, all up in those mountains, all in the trees. And of course, our entire campsite was just a complete whiteout. Um, now all the snow is, we've already started cleaning up and getting ready to pack up. So we've already started scraping all the snow off the tents and everything. And very interesting that just about everybody had a significant amount of condensation inside the tent. So before I wrap up the tent, I'm gonna have to get in there and dry it up. But we're going to get some coffee, get everything packed up, and then we're gonna hit the trail today. And something tells me by the time we get down to where the snow stops, we're gonna see a lot of mud because it probably rained down there. So today should be an interesting day, but man, totally unexpected, just beautiful here. It only took just a few hundred feet down in elevation before the snow disappeared. And thankfully, there was very little mud once we hit the dirt. I think the Mojave soaks up all the water it gets in quick order. It wasn't too long before we were back on the main road. And let me just add that we were all soaking in this beauty that Mother Nature was offering up this morning. 
However, we did need to get back to work and putting some miles in because we've got a lot of distance to cover today. Oh, and on this leg of the trip, our mechanical luck would change. We would encounter a few casualties of the Mojave Road today. So we just made a quick stop at the campsite that we were considering staying at last night. And I'll say we chose the better of the two spots by far. I mean, this is a great spot. It's wide open and you've got a little mountain range over there, which is kind of scenic, but honestly, there's no trees. There's no protection from the elements. So, I mean, if you've got a big group, this is a good place to stay, but I think the place we stayed at was much, much nicer than this. Just a little bit further down the trail, we made a quick stop to the Rock House. This is a great little place to stretch your legs and use the only actual restroom on the Mojave Trail. While we were here, Eric took notice of something that just wasn't quite right with his suspension. We got a sway bar link arm that snapped the metal clean through from the uh, high steer kit on the Dana 44. Oh, good news is then just zip tie that up. Yep, we put it right up here, lock it out of the way and just drive slow on the way home because no more sway bar. It's amazing how fast time flies when you're having fun. We had put in a lot of miles and we were making some great time, so just a quick stop for lunch. One thing I recommend you take note of when you're out here in the Mojave is all the amazing plant life that is all around. Now honestly, I couldn't tell you the name of most of these plants, but I am always sure, no matter where I'm at, to soak in all my surroundings. There's a lot of beauty out there if you look close enough. The next stop on our trip was the famous Mojave mailbox. Many a traveler have stopped here and signed in. I suppose it's kind of a Mojave Road rite of passage. Just on the back side of the mailbox is some strange and bizarre monuments. Frogs, and toy cars, and gnomes. I don't really understand why they are here, but it's just another one of those quirks of the Mojave Road. Just a little further down the trail, we made a slight detour to go check out the lava tubes. The road leading up is rough and we experienced the second casualty of the trip. Marco's tire sidewall must have caught a rock just right. But with plenty of helping hands from this team, the tire was changed out in quick fashion and we were back on the trail. tubes are a cool little stop and just a short walk up from the trail. I didn't actually get to explore these the last time I was here, so I was really looking forward to it. 
Be sure to watch your head and your step when you're going in here. These lava rocks are a little unforgiving. Once inside the tube, there is a little small hole in the top that lets in a very cool ray of sunlight if you arrive at just the right time of day. The mechanical gremlins were not done with us yet. Rob busted off one of his rear shock mounts, but thankfully removing the shock is very easy and you can still limp around without it. Today has been a great example as to why it's important to be prepared and bring a good toolkit. Look at that. See that bend? I just want to thank all the crew that came out, gave me this award. I appreciate all of the effort and all the support. Both Rob and Ali planned on heading home after we reached camp later this evening. But because of this mechanical failure and the fact that we were pretty close to the road right here, they elected to go ahead and head out now. Great guys to wheel with if you ever get the chance. So it's about four o'clock in the evening and we finally arrived to our campsite. We put in a lot of miles today, but it's been an awesome day. Now it's supposed to be pretty windy tonight, so we're really looking forward to having the protection of this big rock mountain right here, which should be very nice. But man, we have such an awesome view of the desert. Look at that, so amazing. It's gonna be a great night. Really looking forward to hitting the trail tomorrow and hitting Soda Lake. And then finally, Traveler's Monument. It's always nice to be able to get to camp before the sun sets, and this spot here turned out to be perfect. Eric's dog Samson was loving it. Marco, what's on the Overland X menu tonight? A little brie and baguette bread on the Venture Scottle, for starters. And we're gonna have some ahi tuna, Asian style, on the flat pit. Nice. With some... Uh, Japanese fried rice. Oh, Japanese fried rice. I love it. Can't wait, buddy. All right, Jen, what are you working on? Working on some guacamole. Guacamole. That's going to get destroyed once that gets put out on the table. So, Josh, we got another kitchen going on here in camp. What are you cooking up? So, we're doing some filet mignon fajitas to go with the tuna. We'll have a little surf and turf. Oh, man. We are eating good tonight. I think I may have gained 10 pounds during this trip from all the amazing food. Jen cooked up one of my favorite camp desserts. Berry cobbler cooked in a cast iron stove over the fire. I could probably eat this whole thing by myself. There it is. I have to be careful. Yeah, you like pour it over sugar or something. What a beautiful morning here at camp and the sunrise, that red sky this morning was just, oh, so beautiful. I was glad I got out of bed early just to check that out. Now, what a huge contrast to the previous night where we were in the snow this morning. There is no wind. It's probably about 50 degrees out here. Just a beautiful morning. We're gonna get everything all packed up and then today we've gotta cross all the way across Soda Lake. Finally gonna hit Traveler's Monument and dump off those rocks that we've been carrying with us. And then we've got a little water crossing and a few more miles to go. Today should be a nice relaxing day. We're gonna be hitting the road here soon. I whipped up a little breakfast in the morning and after a few good cups of black coffee, we were all packed up and ready to go. Traveler's Monument, here we come. Thankfully, there were plenty of trail markers along the way because even with a good GPS, you may find yourself making a wrong turn here or there. 
I may have made a couple along the way that required us to do a little backtracking. We finally reached Soda Lake and wow, it's best. We were very thankful that it was dry because we were able to pick up the pace a bit and make up some good ground as we went across. There she is, Traveler's Monument. If I'm being honest, I expected it to be a little bit bigger than this, but hey, you know what? It's still pretty cool. Well guys, we finally made it to Traveler's Monument. You know, this has been over 110 miles to get here, and this was my second time on the Mojave Road, and I finally get to deposit my rock on Traveler's Monument, along with everybody else. This is awesome, guys. This is such a vast area we're at, but I'm gonna drop off my rock, and I'm gonna go see what the plaque says. Ah, so that's what it says. I can't tell you though, sorry. There was just something gratifying about placing that rock there. We came a long way to deposit our donation to a place many before us had done the very same thing. I'll bet there are some good stories those rocks could tell if only they could talk. We've got a few more miles to go to our next hurdle, which will be the water crossing. The train bridge is a nice spot to stop and have some lunch and you'll probably run into a few other folks while you're out here. Be mindful to keep off the train tracks. This is still an active railway. So we have made it to the water crossing and depending on the time of year, this can be deep or shallow, but irregardless, you need to take your time. You do not want a big wake coming over the front of your Jeep. And obviously somebody like Marco who's got a snorkel helps, but for me, I'm gonna be taking it easy. So the water crossing is always fun, especially if it's your first time going through. 
But man, what an awesome day and what an awesome adventure. You know, the people that I have been here with have really made this journey just amazing. If you have never been on the Mojave Road, this should be on your bucket list. This is my second time out here and I'm so thankful I got to do the whole thing this time. It was a great, great adventure, guys. Listen, if you are visiting Trail Recon for the first time, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Hit that subscribe button. Please remember to always travel the trails responsibly. Thanks for watching.